Curtis and listen up. Curtis and Antoine wasn't here. We're doing um, a mock debate today. A what? You say Curtis? A mock debate. I was here. Sorry, Curtis. I mean Antoine and Demetrius. What you guys will be doing, Joe is handing out the papers. There's a list of topics we're going to discuss. To discuss these, you have to raise your hand. Do not be calling out anything. If you call out something, if we get in any type of argument in here, we'll shut this whole thing down and nothing will be done. I'll give you something else to do. This is going to be done in a respectful manner. You guys know how to do this. You've looked at it. We've discussed it. So this is going to go smooth today. Um, the learning topic up here is on the board. We're going to learn how to debate this topic. We've looked at the voting process. Demetrius, you need to have a seat back over here. No, I want you over here. You're part of the news crew. You're in that seat. We looked at the voting process. We looked how the electoral college has worked. We've done all this, so we're prepared to do this mock debate. Joe's handed out the has handed out the topics. This sheet. Listen, Lavelle. This sheet that I'm passing out will have everyone's name on it, with the exception of Asa. He's not here, so we only have two uh, members on the party today. You guys will ask questions from the sheet. You've got an idea of what you can ask. You can ask more questions, but it has to stay on the topic. As they answer the questions, you guys will find their name on this sheet that I'm passing out. You will jot down what their position is on it. This will be turned in at the end of class. I will explain your exit slip when we get ready to do this. After we finish the debate, I'm going to hand out a ballot. You guys are going to write down the person you choose as president. We're doing a presidential debate here. You're going to pick who you choose to be president, and you're going to give me a reason, one of their policies that they've talked about on here. That will be toward the end of class, and we'll do the official tally and find out who actually won the debate here. I thought you meant like the actual. All right, Demetrius, will you these out for me? Thank you. Who needs a pencil? Me. I hope everyone has a pencil. Because I don't have never mind, never mind. I got a pen. Does that count? Pen or pencil? pencil? Either one. Thank you. I, I need a pencil. Mm -hmm. I need a pencil too, Bill. Go ahead, go ahead, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. 
volunteer. I need someone to hand us. Me? Robert, go ahead. Okay. Uh, should, should be used paying because you know, someone who doesn't have a job or is just not really working and being lazy to the government to pay it off more. Um, it would be taxpayers paying Good. Okay, guys, when you're speaking, make sure you're speaking loud enough for the whole class to hear. As he's telling his his views on this, you guys should be jotting it down on your sheet. Oh, okay. Which one did Robert ask them? So, oh, I got one. So, yeah. so write Lucas's point of view down on your paper. We write our own. Please. We write our own. Please. Please. Yes, please. Uh, no, it would be uh, government funded because you'd be paying your own plan instead of paying for everybody else's plan and your good taxes. Okay, guys, where it says Asa, you're going to write Antoine down there. Antoine. Okay. The next person, remember, each person on the panel gets a chance to tell their viewpoint on this. So, Joe, you're going to go next. Can we ask the question? Uh, uh, Joe, uh, do you, should, should insurance be government funded? Why or why not? No. No. No, because uh, I don't think they should because Joe, just relax. Mm -hmm. Just relax. You've done this. You got it. Yeah, you so do you do you think the government should fund health care? Or should we pay for it on our own? Oh, yes, they should find health care because what if you're not able, you don't have enough money to pay for it when you're going through struggle. Excellent. What if you're not able to pay for it? Like, what if you're going through a struggle to where you don't have enough money to pay for it? insurance? So, Obamacare? Yes, that's why Obamacare will come in. Antoine, you're up. Asa? <laughs> Should be government funded while I'm Yes, but it should be government funded for people over like 50 or something, for people who can't work. But as far as people who do work, it shouldn't be government funded. So you want to put an age order on it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, that's a reasonable. I like that answer. Okay. One more topic on healthcare. We have should and I get the opportunity to ask you guys questions as well. This one I think is one of my favorites under the health care issue. Should you have to pay a penalty? Should you have to pay a fine because you can't afford health care? Antoine. Honestly, I feel like in that situation there should be programs to help people who like can't pay for it. So no. So you shouldn't you shouldn't be forced to pay it. If you can't pay it, you can't pay it. Okay. Other than that, there's just going to be more debt. What kind of programs do you um, envision? What well, could be an example of something that could be put in place? The Twan Curve program, where if you got enough money, you pay your insurance bill, and you just, you tear out your stuff and run that leg or something, you call up Twan Curve, they have those places. So, under your Twan Care, Antoine, how is this going to work? How is the government going to help? The government's going to help because they're going to help us fund it. As far as the people, it's going to be there for you to use, but it's going to be like for like. It's, there are going to be certain requirements. Like, if you don't have the money, I need to know that you don't have the money because I'm not just going to give you the money for free. Right. This has no go. So you got to show proof. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, Joe, the same for you. Mm -hmm. Ask the question again. Should you be fined? Mm -hmm. Should you have to pay a penalty for not being able to afford health insurance? I think no, because what if like you are not able to get a good job that pays good, and you working at like McDonald's or something? You like thirty working at McDonald's? They don't pay. That's not. I don't think that's good money for someone who's at that age and be able to pay insurance. So no. No, she's, she's saying you shouldn't be fine, guys. Okay, Lucas, same question for you. 
So you should be fine if you are not looking for a job and you can't uh, keep a job because if you already have money or you're living on welfare or something, that's just you being lazy and you uh, just booting the kids. Uh, if they get an injury, you can't pay for them, but you're just sitting uh, with cash. But if you are looking for a job and you can't get a job, it should be, uh, there shouldn't be a fine because if you just can't afford it, but if you're just not looking for a job. Okay. Okay. Um, when he said that, he said uh, when you're looking for a job, does he mean like, does he mean like, he has to be like homeless or something? Guys, we're going to move on to public smoking. Chris, will you start us out with a question on public smoking, please? Hi, Lucas. Would you support a ban on public smoking? Why or why not? That wouldn't happen, but around restaurants uh, or other like places where there's kids That's or a high density of kids, you shouldn't be able to smoke there in that area. But you can smoke anywhere else. What are you saying, bro? Yes, I know. Oh. Hey, I think what he's trying to say is he's kind of both, but he's going to put a stipulation on it. You can't just say there yes. can't be any public smoking because so many people are addicted to it. <clears throat> but around certain areas, you shouldn't be able to smoke you should because be of people eating and people with. So you're saying yes. He's so basically yeah, no. saying he's basically saying they should be banned around where. Kids be like playgrounds, <laughs> like hospitals, hospitals, uh, hospitals, parks. It's already not allowed in place. It's so tobacco, and a piece but people, but not everybody follows the, the law. Okay, so what Lucas is saying, yes to a ban in certain areas. So help the teachers. Yes, that's all I gotta say. Yes, or something, bro. Well, bro, you get two points. <laughs> He's explaining it good. <laughs> so, all right. Say the yes or no. He yes, said yes with stipulations in certain see. areas. All right, Joe. <coughs> I'm following back off his statement because uh, I do feel like it should be banned around where it kids be because I feel like that's. That's where most of kids smoking start now by following grown-ups doing it because they think it's cool or something. So, yes, I think it should be banned. So, banned around just children? Banned, yeah, just children. Okay. You okay with going into a restaurant and selling cigarettes? Smoking? Well, no, not just around children, but like... I would say people that don't smoke, too. In certain places, not like everywhere, because mm -hmm. people are going to smoke. Like you can smoke from your house, but because it's your property. But I feel like if it's around, you know, uh, uh what's it called? An old people's home? Nursing home. 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 I think it should be banned around there too. I think it should be banned around there too. Okay, Antoine, same question for you. Um, but no, I wouldn't support it because, um, because honestly, it's all in like how you, how you look at it. Like some people, it's just like you, you do some things, some people don't like. If you choose to smoke, you choose to smoke. Now in public places, like in a park or a restaurant or something, no, smoking shouldn't be allowed, but like. If you walk in on a sidewalk and you walk past somebody smoking a cigarette, you can't do nothing about that. True. True. Okay, here's a question with that since you brought that topic up. Should they have smoking places somewhere other than in an entrance of a business? So people that don't smoke, for instance me, I can't stand the smell of smoke. Mm -hmm. Why should I have to walk through someone that's smoking to go into a restaurant? Should they should they have specific places? Yes, but at the right? same time, but at the same time, how would you feel? Well, how would you feel if you walked in a restaurant and somebody smoking inside? 
it's like a half half and half thing. You know, people who don't smoke get a little bit of what they want, and people who smoke get a little bit of what they want. Now, how would you feel if you smoked and somebody told you you had to go all the way in the back behind the dumpster in order to smoke? Why? Just like that's just only person who's winning out of that is you, right? But if you're standing in the front smoking, all you have to do is get past them. Once you get in, you don't have to smell the smoke, nothing. And that way, everybody's happy. So your stance is they should be allowed to smoke where they want. Mm, no, they. Well, I don't know how to put it, but in certain places, no. Like certain places, no. You just can't do it. Okay, let's let, let me give you an example. You a restaurant. You're gonna ask good questions, though. So I'm expecting good questions from you. In a restaurant, should you have a smoking section in a restaurant or non smoking section? Or should it just be no smoking altogether? No smoking. No, no smoking all together in there. I mean, who wants to eat and smell smoke? Yeah, that's what I say. Okay. Like what I'm saying is like it's a win-win situation because you smoke outside the front, and then you go in and you're in your relief from the smoke smell. You don't have to worry about smelling smoke until you step out front. Okay. So no ban on public smoking, but just not in public places. Yeah. All right. Well, you want to hear that? Okay. All right. What about if I bring up the topic that public smoking and secondhand smoke is a danger to a lot of people? For instance, people that have asthma, cigarette smoke can trigger that. They can have an asthma attack. So if you're walking through that person that's smoking at the front door going to a non-smoking restaurant, what if that person has asthma and they have to walk through? So, 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 so
I know a lot of them that when they break, they just go sit in the car and smoke. What about where you're not allowed to even smoke on the property, even if you're in your car? Like at a hospital, you're not, they say to go outside, you're not allowed to smoke outside the building, and you're not allowed to smoke on the hospital property at all. You think people will take it as far as just to walk the street and smoke a cigarette real quick? Do you think they're going to do that? Yeah, they think it's a I don't know, but it, what, if they, what if they got like a, what, depends on how long they break this. They should make a whole lot of this. Well, let's go, guys. Go to lunch, come back. Yes, no, I can take more things. Go have a seat. Per gallon of gas. 
Then they raise too low to like one dollar or some cent. I think two thirty would be the uh, perfect price. Yeah, no, I thought it was yes. 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 Because I feel like if it was higher, like three dollars and twelve cents, that's as that's higher than what I chose. They saying that's uh, what I chose was already have. But what if you can't afford to get to fill your tank up? You trying to get somewhere like my like person in Murphy? You did good job. You did good job. You did good job. All right. So two thirty. Joe's a little nervous, so I think the camera is kind of no. But you're doing a good job. Stop. Just, just relax. You've got it. You've got good answers. All right, Antoine, I believe you're up for the same question, right? How will I work to reduce the price of gas? Yes. Would you re reduce the price of gas per gallon? Yeah. Is that it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I would go to the people who we buy the gas from, and I would tell them I'm a little bit short, so I'm gonna need. You know, I like when you're short, you gotta get from the eight instead of ten. Well, but I would go to the people that we buy the gas from, and I would try to talk them down a little bit, work something out to where we sell them clothes or something and, in exchange for gas or something. You know. So you do a barter system. Yeah. Okay. So we wouldn't have to pay as much. Rock jeans for gas. Yeah. Rock jeans for gas. Rock yeah. jeans are expensive. Yeah. Rock jeans are expensive. All right. So Antoine's Antoine's gonna work with the oil companies that you make the gas out of. What's some jeans? Uh, gentlemen. Yeah. I don't know whose phone's dinging, but if I find it, I'm taking it. Hey, hey, Curtis. Dude, it is not. Pay know. attention. All right. Curtis, or sorry, Antoine is going to barter, use the barter system. He's going to work with the oil companies that sell the oil to make the gas. He's going to barter with them. He's going to trade something for the oil that we need to make the gas. He's going to lower the gas prices that way. Does everyone got that down on their paper? And one is using a bartering system. All right, here's my question for you guys. If the gas gets too low, the state of Kentucky doesn't have money to pay for the upkeeps of the roads. So they don't they 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 uh, make the gas higher. You think they're going to make, let me explain why gas prices don't need to go very low. We have people that work for the state that keep the maintenance up on all the roads. You see the roads right now, especially in the wintertime, they get these big potholes in them. Yep because of all those, the water that freezes and it makes the holes in the road. What happens if you get gas prices too low? The taxes that we pay on gas, those taxes help maintenance on the road. It helps keeps the roads up. If gas gets too low, then there's no money to pay for the upkeep. But road. at the same time, gas prices are higher, like here, but as you can see, most of the roads out there aren't as fixed, but you go out like St. Matthews and all the roads are smooth, so that don't make sense to me. What do you think St. Matthews, you gave that example, what do you think St. Matthews may have better roads? Because they use higher gas prices. Yeah. Higher gas prices? Yeah. Should all the gas prices within the state, within the state, let's talk about the state of Kentucky, compare it to, say, California, should all the gas prices be the same in every state? No. 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 Why not? More, yeah. more cities got more money. Yeah. More cities got more money. California, for example, is huge compared to Kentucky. Yeah. So what we might pay Joe's two thirty yeah. per gallon, they may pay five fifty. Dude, I'm gonna come to you. Not five. Texas is it, baby. Uh, it's it's Get totally on topic, guys. Landwise is Alaska population. It's on Alaska. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I had a I'm sorry I had a Joe moment. Alright. Curtis. Straighten up, dude. Alright. So here's my question for the panel. Would you support lowering the gas prices to say 
the lowest I remember was 76 cents a gallon. Would you guys, Lucas, would you support gas going back to that price? No. Why not? Uh, well, money had a different value back then. True. Today. And if we lower it so much to that standard, uh, if you look what happened when it was just a dollar fifty, if we lower it below a dollar, there's going to be so much worse roads. We're going to lose a lot of money, and our stock just goes back to our fragile economy. Yeah. But at the same time, hold on, it'll all work. It'll all work together because think about it. Gas is a bill every month now. Nowadays, gas is a bill every month. You pay less for gas, which means you got more money to do other stuff, which means less money taken from the government, which you said, from welfare and stuff. It'll, it'll help all of that. Um, um. You're saying if it goes up in this hand? Yeah, I'm saying, like, like, yeah, it'll, it'll help balance it out because you know how like food and stuff goes up? Like the price of living goes up all the time. I feel like gas shouldn't be like within that because you feel me? It's gas. Everybody needs gas. Anybody who has a car needs gas. Well, the president was like, we live in a really fragile economy where everything gets to places at the time. Perfect timing, right? Well, when the cash flow stops, one thing is removed. Let's say our gasoline is removed from trade because we can't pay it off. Then you don't have people who can't even get gasoline for their cars anymore. And you're just stuck in the driveway. I, I'm stuck. <laughs> I'm stuck. You're stuck. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Keep in mind, you're writing down what their thoughts is on this, on this paper that you have for each candidate. This is going to give you an idea of who you're going to vote for at the end of class. These notes that you're taking, you'll be turning in to me. This is going to be graded. But this is a, gives you an idea of, because once you start doing this, you're not going to remember what everyone said on every topic. So this is just for your benefit to help you remember so you can determine who you're going to vote for. All right, we have a couple more topics. I don't want to run out of time before we get through most of them. All right, this one is litter. The next one is going to be litter. Erica, can you start us off? Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Joe, who should be appointed to clean it up? What'd you say? On litter, who should be appointed to clean it up? Prison works, crew, and people doing community service. Who should be appointed to clean it up? Okay, what? Can you put that in a different form? We're talking about the litter. She's asking you who should be who should be in charge of cleaning up the litter. The person who put the litter down. Okay, I think. What, what if that person's not around? What if you don't know who done it? Well, if you don't know who done it, then that's that's the city's job. They got garbage trucks on. Whoa, whoa. I think they should put more garbage cans. They should put more garbage cans down. Like the street. In the street. No. no. I, I, I feel like they should do that, where the prison crews and stuff, and the people doing the same thing, they don't have to clean up the trash. Yeah. They don't have to. That's, that's a way to make money, and they're not, they're not doing trash, but they're just picking up trash. H1 says um, the prison crew should do it. Yeah, it's awesome. And, okay. like, for community service, for uh, people who are incarcerated, they can have, like, maybe, like, a slightly lower sentence. Yeah, or for picking up trash and they murdered like 13 people? Depending on the security. Okay. Yeah, depending on the crime they did. Or the security level of the if prison. It's, if it's like a misdemeanor. Okay. 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 So the crime has to be the crime has to be a lower level crime. You can't be committing murder and getting out and picking up garbage. <laughs> but then you won't just be uh, sitting around practically a uh, box for the and they just won't be sitting around in a box the entire time. You'll actually be helping the community as well while they're... So essentially you're doing community service. Okay. Here's my question for you guys. All right. If we have... More trash cans. More trash cans for Joe. If we have the prisoners that are in jail, depending on their crime, should we have to pay these guys to come out and pick up garbage? No, because that's not better to do. We're just in there alive. All right. Some of you guys say no. Lucas, tell me what your thoughts is. They would be paid money, but a slightly lower sentence. Okay. No. 
what do you think? Should the prisoners be paid money to pick no. up the garbage? No, no. it should be because part of the. Uh, Let Joe answer. No, because. But no, because I feel like they shouldn't get no money. Because they did something wrong to be put in prison. So, no, they shouldn't be getting paid. So, what is it? If anything, should I don't know about. No, yeah. no, we think like in exchange for a slightly lower sentence job, uh, people in prison could pick up trash. Okay. okay. Lucas said, go pick up garbage and they're going to reduce your sentence. Don't pick up garbage. If you no. pick up garbage, you're, they're going to reduce your sentence. But you won't get the wage. But right. you won't get paid in money. No money being paid out. No. Antoine, same topic. Should we pay prisoners to pick up garbage <coughs> the ropes? I mean, yeah, because when you're in prison, like, think about it. Like, anybody who's went to prison, they've lost their whole life, their family, their house, their cars, all that. So, if you're doing all this work, wouldn't you expect to have some money to fall back home when you get out? But who's fault say is that, though? But say you just did. They did the crime, okay. so they got to do the time. Okay, but think about it like this. Say you just did five years in prison. Now you're a registered felon, so you can't get a job making more than $10 an hour. You don't have a place to stay, a car, no food, no nothing. So why not make some money and put it up? In exchange for picking up some trash. Right? Right? If right? the right? government can pay the police to stand around oh, okay. and do all that old extra stuff, then they can pay somebody to pick up the trash. Yeah. Right. But that's, that's, that's they they fault. They, if they choose to go out and kill a whole bunch of people, and they just... No, that's they fault. No, that's they fault. Forget that. They, yeah, they put themselves in that situation. Bro, what's the matter? This topic could go on and on, I think, really quick, but Curtis has a question that he's going to ask of these guys, correct, Curtis? Okay, what are you talking about? Okay, let's hear it. Um, what if one of them didn't do that? What if one of them didn't do that? What if one of them didn't do that? And they, like, they, they didn't snitch. They didn't just stay there for no reason. Like, they actually really didn't do that. So, they're innocent and they're yeah. in jail? Okay. Yeah. What's it? So, like, how can you be innocent in jail? A lot of people, a lot of people don't snitch. So, they get in jail for not snitching? So, yes. should yes. you, okay, let's, if they let's, don't catch let's nobody rephrase, else, gentlemen, let's, 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 re, let's rephrase his question. If you know 100% certain that that person's person that's in jail, is guilty should they be paid? <coughs> no. if there's a doubt that they may not be guilty of that crime should they be paid if they're not the guilty difference? then if they're not guilty then yeah but if they are guilty then no because See, you can't base it off that that's, that's not true. fair you cannot base it off that like you, it has why pay for that's <laughs> not yeah i only got to say the police know they're not stupid because they know something they know, they know you know something Okay, I've got hands flying all over the place. Elijah, I think yours is at first. Yeah. I like to say, like, if something like that happened and you know that the, you know, you're not completely sure, but you're mainly sure that the person is innocent, that if they do do their um, um, the community service, but um, pick up the pick up the litter for a certain time, then the per then that person should be able to get another ch uh, another chance to um, to redeem themselves, like in a way like a redemption type thing. Okay. I like that idea. Give them a second chance. Okay. Desiree, or Destiny, sorry. I think it should go on their commissary where they can buy food and stuff in jail, but not where they can be happy. You know what I mean? Okay, I like that idea too. So sometimes too if they get paid in money, they can buy, maybe they can buy candy that they normally wouldn't get. I know candy seems petty in an adult world, but how many people in jail get candy? That would be a shame. You guys love candy. You guys love food. So... If you guys get candy in class, you can way up here. So I, that, I think that's a good idea. Deshaun, you had your hand up. Uh, I have a question. What if somebody gets life in jail? Yeah, what if somebody so, what? Life, life in jail. jail. So that's probably, if life's in jail, it's probably more of a bigger crime. Should those people be allowed to come out no. and pick up their no. well, The life sentence can be reduced down to 20 years. Mm. Can be reduced down? No, like a life sentence already right now can be reduced down to 20 years for you to try to get out. 
Uh, that's where there's multiple life sentences in water. One more question, and we got to move on. All right, so if they do have life, well, not even that. Okay, so if they pick up trash for a week, what does that knock off a day? Or if they do a tra uh, pick up trash for a day and they get a day off, like how do you manage that? Manage what? <coughs> how can you manage how they get time? Yeah. Now we talk about paying them. Oh, I, but I thought you said time off. Lucas did say uh, time off. Your sentence be reduced. No, I'm going get paid in June. But I feel like you you still would have to serve your time if you just gonna be able to enjoy it a little bit more because you have some money. I don't feel like anybody, if you do the crime, then you deserve to do the time. You can't just get your time off and think that you're ready to go do some work and then boom, you out. No. Alright, this is a great topic and I wish we could just debate this the rest of the class that we gotta move on. Alright. One more. Alright, this is we're gonna do a really quick um, deviation from this. We've got a wild card back here that wants to ask a couple questions. The same yes. topic. We're gonna move on to which one do you want to do? The juvenile and criminals. Juvenile and criminals. She has questions for you guys. And you guys listen. This is a, this is this one's not on your topic. We're throwing in a wild card. So you guys have to think on your feet. She's going to ask questions. You guys listen. You may think of something else to ask, and then we're going to vote. Go ahead, Haley. Okay. Uh, listen up. Do you think criminals should be able to get jobs once they get out? Are you talking not about right. Else? Not right. Yeah. As soon, not as soon as they get out, but I. Yeah, in a couple of years when they get out, like maybe three or two, yeah, then, then, then they should get they do then they they should they be able to get out. I feel like when you first get out, if you like, if you didn't already did your time and you're trying to change your life around, I feel like you should have a chance to get a nice job to where you're making good money. And all that felony and stuff, I feel like that should be getting gotten rid of because it's it's like labeling people, like how sex offenders and stuff. You can't label somebody for their past. You have Get them another team. I don't understand how they say law and trust. They don't know nothing about a body. Okay. Okay. Do you have another question for that on that same topic, Caitlin? Yeah. It's, okay. What if you have a team like? Okay. Listen up. Typically, Dwayne. Typically, when a teenager commits a crime, yeah. it doesn't. Yeah. It's not, it's not, not public record. Typically, unless it's something really bad. Um, so that's like a hidden record. So if a teen commits a crime, you're wanting to know what? Normally they can't be in the military because they've committed a crime that's still in the background. Do you think they should be able to go in the military? Ooh, excellent question. Do I think that uh, a teenager that has been in jail should be able to go to the military? No, like, okay, if a teenager gets a felony, they go a certain time, they get out. When they get older, because it's on their record, they can't be in the military. Like, they can't register because they're, they've are they got something on their record. And so do you believe that they should be able to get it if it's not something too bad? If it's not something too bad, then I think they should be able to have a chance to be in the military. Mm. If it's a misdemeanor, it's where it's a low-level crime instead of a felony. Uh, and under like a uh, age limit because your brain doesn't fully mature until you're around 20 years old, 25. Different between uh, genders. But uh, if your brain hasn't fully developed, I think you should be given a chance because you're pretty stupid stuff. So when you're a teenager, you do stupid stuff, so you should possibly. be forgiven, possibly. Okay. Teenagers mess up a lot, so. So they shouldn't be held accountable, Joe? Yeah. They should be held accountable to a certain extent because it's a certain part of the brain that isn't fully grown, and, okay. that, and that's actually what you use mostly for problem solving. So you can be put in a pretty tough predicament because you see us in the way out, but it means you're in jail. Okay. You got any more? All right. Back to this. We're going to do one quick question, and it's on the very last topic. Flip to the very back. We're going to do a really quick question on border control and illegal immigrants. Make sure you're on that page. All right. We 
Lucas, I'm going to ask a question. What is your stance on border control? How should we, how should we as the United States control who's coming across our borders? What things should be put in place to prevent illegals from coming in? That type of thing. We need to do a challenge here. We all want them. All right, well, there need to be advanced security on our border and advanced screening for people coming in from other countries. There should be advanced screening and uh, more security yeah. around the border, but a wall would just be it'd just financially stupid. So, so no wall because of financial reasons? We wouldn't be able to afford a wall on the entire border. That's right. And getting... Like Donald Trump, where you try to get Mexico to do it, is pretty stupid. Because they're not going to want to build a wall out of their own money, which they already don't have money. Okay. Joe, what do you think? How should we stop illegal illegals from coming into our country? What should be put in place to protect the United States from illegals that could possibly be terrorists? Well, I wrote, I wrote down um, that I think we should, I think we should let everybody come in, like make only certain states or countries to where they can't come across the border. That's what I wrote. Can you say it again? That's what I wrote. I said I don't think we should let everybody come in. I think we should have um, selected few. That should be laid across the board. Okay, so we're gonna select who's coming in. Like, we. I feel like it should be more people who we are like allies with, who we trust, who we can pass them. Them should be the type of people that attack country. As far as everybody else, not yeah. from the Middle East, bro. Like, like a select. Everybody from the Middle East come to our country. Who's that non-discrimination? It's so, not discrimination anymore of like trying to take it. Well, sorry, shit. Yeah. Like, 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 say you live, say you live and you go to a black person, but you know, like, they, they got guns and they out of way selling drugs and stuff. Like, but you say you don't want your children to, you don't want their children coming over to your house because, huh? I'll explain it. You say you don't want their children coming over to your house to bring your kids because what? They're bad, right? Is that discrimination? Is that discrimination? Is that discrimination? Okay, so is what Kurt or um, Demetrius said should we should we sorry, your name is Demetrius. Demetrius. <laughs> You're good. All right. Should we stop people from the Middle East? Is he saying like, I feel like if we have like if we know if we know like they're not good news, no, don't let them in, regardless of what everybody else thinks. Robert. I think we should do more bad. More background checks. Do you think everyone's going to be able to pass a background check, Lucas? No. Uh, no, and in all honesty, I wouldn't want any refugees coming to the country to begin with. Because even Germany, for example, have uh, their children being raped uh, because they let refugees in and they've been overrun by them. Because, and they're not even following those, and they're literally just asking politely, please do not rape the law, please don't rape our children. Do you really want that to be in the U.S.? Do you think that's in the U.S. now? Because already immigrants have more rights than natural born citizens because they yes. Mm -hmm. What type of sense does that make? How do immigrants have more rights than natural born citizens? That's what's stupid. Damn. That don't make sense. What? That don't sound true. It is true. That's the sad. Do you know what immigrants have to go through just to get to their rights? Work for bail. I do know that they are also, also let us know. They're not even they don't even come in going to get taxes because they're new to the country. Right, so you can't so if you, you let somebody move into their house, you go have them pay rent even though they just got out of jail. You know they ain't got no money, that's why they came over to the first place. They, that's the whole no, purpose of us letting people into the country. And it also subjects us to terrorist attacks because we already know that ISIS is already uh, fake passports. We are subjected to terrorist attacks every day. You cannot stop terrorist attacks. Why? Well, you can, can but you can, them. but you can't. You can, there is no preventing them because anybody can turn into a terrorist. Anybody can wake up one day and say, "I want to go blow up some people." But you are okay. saying, but you are saying, but I'm saying it's everywhere. It's not something that you can like fully protect, but you can. Well, that's impossible. But the ones you can protect from 
you can because there is people. no ones because it could be anybody. It could be you on the love. We don't know it. <laughs> okay. This is great, guys. I wish we could go on, but I'm passed out. All right. Make sure your name is on the paper you're going to turn into me. All right. Go ahead and take a few minutes. Write down the person's name you're going to vote for on this ballot. Do we vote? If you want, yes, you're going to vote. Hopefully, you guys will vote for yourselves. That's typically what happens in a debate, in a... In a in an election, you vote for yourself if you're running for office. All right. Where it says policy, listen, where it says policy, these three guys up here, well, two guys and lady, they have pretty much stated what they are running for. What, what are you running for? Listen. They are three guys. If you look on your sheet, you'll get an idea of kind of where they stand on certain issues. So if Lucas, he's totally against building a wall to stop illegals from coming into our country. So use one of those little clues from your paper to fill in what you think their policy is. Uh, yeah, you can use one category for this. You don't have to do it like a summary of each thing. Alright. It shouldn't take very long to write in your person's name. Fold it in half. Do not write your name on this. I don't want to know who you voted for. You're just going to write the name of the person you voted for. Oh, so what? We vote for somebody up there? Yes. One of these three people you're voting for. Hey, guys. Yes. You're writing where it says name. You're writing one of these three candidates, not your name. Not your personal name. Here, Dwayne. Get your name. Get your name. Dwayne voted for himself. <laughs> you can write your name in on the ballot if you don't like any of the candidates. You can, just like our last Tuesday when we had a primary, there was a, a line on there where you could write someone in. All right. If you've done this, Raise it up and I'll come around and pick it up. All right, now what I want you to do on the sheet that you wrote all of their opinions on, hey, you're going to do an exit slip on the back of that. So flip it over for me. Yes. Hold them up. On the back of it, you're going to take the last five minutes of class and you are going to put on there what candidate. Listen up, gentlemen. On the back of the paper, you fill out all the stuff on. You are going to write on the back of that. What was the tipping point to make you vote for that candidate? What was the thing that got you to make you sway toward that person's views? I want to read the one card. So do from what you got in here. I know you was downstairs in the office. So. Yes, on the back of that page. <laughs> Okay, all the no, exit slip. Okay, okay. Hey, I'll pause up here. You guys got two minutes. You got your stuff showing? No, I don't know that. The exit slip is on the back of the paper you was filling out on each candidate. You're going to write down what made you pick that person. What did they say? What stance did they take on a position that made you pick that person? What did you say? All right, I'm going to tally these up really quick while you guys do your uh, exit slip. Dwayne? Is it C? Is it C? You put a K on the paper. I know. I spelled it wrong on the paper. That's why I asked. Boogie.
shit. I'm going to go. Joe, you got to exit slip? Yeah, no. Exit slip on the very back of what you was keeping track of there. I like that uh, idea that on that table. What was the question you asked? What was the question you asked? Gentlemen. This might be a close election. Who do you think is going to win? I'm going to beat you up there for a joke. Yes. What do you say? You got yours. <laughs> 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 what was your question about the, the exit? The exit <laughs> Gentlemen, you're about ready to lose a lot of stuff. Sorry. Oh, no. All right. Antoine, you are the president of this class. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. All right. Oh, oh, oh. You, you're the president. You're the president. All right, have a seat for me. Okay, here's some of the things that are written down really quick. <sighs> Buddy, I'm going to box you jaws. All right. All right, Antoine, this, one, this person said made smart decisions in this situation. All right, this one's for Lucas. Has a... Uh, Good mind, I'm assuming, has a lot of good reasons applies to everyone with certain benefits. Yes, All right. She said that. Here's another one for she Lucas. Did. Listen up. Lucas, regulate the gas prices so it doesn't spike up or down. That was the person, that's one of the things that, that this good. person said. This is, that was good. All right, this is probably my favorite. Antoine's. Work with the oil companies to lower gas prices. And I think the trade... The bartering system that he was talking about, not necessarily that we're going to change uh, rock. rock jeans, not we're going to swap bar, rock <laughs> jeans, but uh, Antoine, not banned just in certain places. I'm not sure Question. what they're referring to on that. What is smoking? Smoking. All right. Somebody voted for Lucas because his litter policy. You welcome. Someone, <laughs> someone else voted for Lucas because he's against illegal immigration. You up. All right. Someone voted for Antoine because of the border control. Don't think coming. You up, brother. Don't I'm think. <laughs> but you don't know. I'm not sure what that says. All right. Someone voted for Lucas because of ban on refugees entering sovereign soil. Very high words here. I like that. Who? I wonder who voted for himself. <laughs> Joe. What is that? Are you in control now? Are you sure? Because if you're not, I'm going to fix you. All right. They voted for Joe because of her policy on smoking around the kids. Bob, you can take one point off for me. All right, that's the results. Make sure your um, exit slip is filled out on the back. If you need me to tell you what to write again, I will. Your exit slip, why you voted for that person, what was the main thing that made you vote for that person? What was the tipping point that made you vote for Lucas or made you vote for Joe or made you vote for Antoine? Write it on the back of the sheet because you're going to turn that sheet into me. And that's what's going to be graded. Uh, Nasia, yours is going to have an exception on it because you were in the office and so you didn't get to cover that part. Now, you should have written down on there, even though we had the wild card question on juveniles. You should have, you should have written that on there. I did. I know which ones that we didn't cover. I'll make note of that when I grade these. But everything else should be filled out. Your exit slip should be on the back. Make sure your name is on these guys. Gentlemen, we're not finished yet. Make sure your name is on these because I grade a lot of stuff that doesn't have names on it and I don't know who to give the points. That stuff you can either lay up here or you can keep. Go ahead and put your papers, top tray. 